the newsletters. So this is the North American newsletter that comes out every month. Uh, the North American newsletter happens to be one of our um, really good um, uh, modes of communication. Um, uh, comms tells me that it has one of the highest uh, open rates. So when it does get distributed, a lot of people actually pay attention and look at it. So in addition to the newsletter, so there's different regional letters that come from ICANN and they have basically common contact content that needs to go, that goes out to all the newsletters. But we also work really hard to make sure that our uh, North America one has regional content that makes, um, you know, that is interesting, interesting to the community. And we, in between Joe and myself, we've been trying to create regular um, content that we put in each newsletter every month. Um, I am interested in if you think of there's, um, you know, specific ideas or specific kind of features that we carry throughout the year and then in the newsletter, we're happy to do that because that'll be one of the focus areas that um, we'll work. and um, provide in, um, 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 updates on how we're doing in terms of performing against the plan. Are we reaching our targets? Are we not? And publish those um, um, performance indicators, how we're doing against the plan. So, so that's on the overall communication goals we have for it. Um, I think, okay. So then now going into each one of the of the objectives in the, in the engagement plan. Um, the engagement plan, if you're familiar with the ICANN strategic plan, the strategic plan kind of lays out what is it that we kind of envision, right? Like where as, a, as, an, as ICANN, as the ecosystem, where do we want to be? Um, that's, that's the engagement plan. You know, what is our vision for, um, for, for the organization of how we want to achieve our goals? The engagement plan then starts to dig in of how what what are the ways that are going to get us there, right? So it's more more specific, more focused, more action oriented. The first goal in the strategic plan is the security one, and this is the def definition exactly as it comes out of the ICANN strategic plan, uh, which is focusing on uh, strengthening the security of the domain name system and the DNS server system. To this community, it's, um, I'm sure this is something that I know you guys uh, work on and, and, and it's very clear to you because of your active, uh, uh, level of activity within ICANN. So um, the, um, securing the domain name system looks at upholding the security and stability of the DNS system. And then on the other side, uh, so looking at things like um, DNS abuse, um, the root server system, the root server system is evolving not just from the from the from a technical perspective where you know several instances uh, different instances of the root ser of root servers are being added but also the root server governance itself is also evolving um, the root server system is still in in the shape that it was uh, in about maybe 30 years ago when with the way the root servers were delegated and how different organizations were given identities uh, to look after but that's, that needs to evolve. And some people in the organization have heard refer to the, the governance, the evolving of the governance of the root server system to be the next big thing after the, IANA, the, the transition of the IANA um, stewardship from the US government to the multi-stakeholder model. So it is a big deal that is currently in development. So it's something to pay attention to and, and um, and, and do as a, as a strategic goal, but also to focus on locally. So the engagement plan takes that strategic goal, the engagement area and looks at things that we wanna do um, in, the, in the plan to focus on that strategic goal. So as you can imagine, there's a big area for us here with engagement to utilizing the office of the CTO. And that's where people like David Huberman that I talked about at the beginning is very essential for us. So together with the office of the CTO, we work on uh, finding um, partnerships that make sense for us, 
uh, to put on events, to focus on technical work that the office of the CTO wants us to focus on and, and go out and inform the community that's happening and try to gain um, interest and participation in that work. Uh, for example, the ITHI, the Internet Technical Health Indicators, is, is an example. Um, the, the more there are participants in ITHI, the better it is in terms of the data that it produces. So one of the, the goals that we have with the Office of the CTO is to um, put on perhaps more events about ITHI, answer more, uh, answer questions, reach out to specific um, uh, large ISP or connectivity providers and talk to them about ITHI and try to enroll them into, into the project, etc. So that's in the engagement area. And then in the outcomes, as we engage, we're looking for to track outcomes there. Um, so is there participation? Are people engaging in the, in the, in the ITHI, for example, or in the DAR system? Um, have we provided enough information about the, I, I mentioned the evolution of the root server system. Have we provided enough information about what's happening there? And are people engaging to learn more about what's happening there? So these are the target outcomes that we are trying to track by having these engagement areas. So that's the security one. In terms of dates, um, and so, I'm sorry, in terms of events or um, engagements that we've tried to deliver against that goal, um, these are the, the events that we've captured out of our tracking system. And I'm listing these here not to discuss specifically, but to give you an example of what we're doing here. Uh, so for example, we have, we captured six events against that goal involving about 234 people. And they include things like university lectures, um, GSE and Octo putting um, uh, an event together to, to deliver. Uh, these um, 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 events also involve us designing a webinar. And I know many of you were in, involved in the root zone from A to Z webinar, which was a really useful and very helpful one. I think I've heard a lot of good input from that on the community. Um, and it wasn't really even very, um, it was very much an informational one, you know, about how, how do we go from, uh, how do we go from um, delegating things in the root zone to actually serve, serving them onto a root server system? And who are the root server operators and what are their concerns with serving the root zone, et cetera? So that's on the security one. Then jumping to the next one, the next strategic objective in the ICANN um, strategic plan was the ICANN's governance. So this one is looking at, of course, strengthening the ICANN uh, governance model, the multi-stakeholder model, um, and then the participation within that model. Um, so people like, sorry, Mary, but I'm gonna pick on you. You're uh, somebody who participated in ICANN 72, the next genner. So now what's next? I mean, it's really great to see you here in the, in the Naralo call. And I, as soon as I saw you were here, I wrote down your name to see, you know, what, you know, how can we get you involved? How can we get, keep, make you part of the multi-stakeholder model? And that's exactly what these events are, are going after. So sorry, Eduardo, already have her. <laughs> um, so that's in the ICANN's governance. In terms of engagement area, so we're looking at, uh, we want to have target doing um, outreach to stakeholders to um, increase participation. A very important area of participation is uh, policy, uh, PDP, policy development working groups. Um, and, um, and but because that's basically what, where, where it's really important to have as much um, as much um, participation as possible. Uh, then also strengthening existing uh, partnerships and then expanding to new ones. So, you know, if we're all a very, very major um, uh, goal that's impressed upon us as staff is, yes, we need to continue to engage with existing um, people that are involved within ICANN, but important to, for us to reach the people that we uh, reach out to new people and, and, and you know we need to be able to reach out beyond our existing that we more people know about what ICANN is and the role of ICANN in the ecosystem etc. Um, 
So in terms of outcomes here, we're looking at what do we produce in terms of um, content, whether it's um, online or it's um, written um, uh, content that we distribute, um, how we are working with functions like the Office of the CTO, the um, government engagement team on the, on the materials that they produce. Keep in mind that the Office of the CTO and government engagement also produce their own publications. Um, Octo does more of a research focused uh, publications and then GE does more um, study papers on a certain topic, governance topic or certain country uh, specific topics. So we, we need to make sure that people are aware that these, these materials do come out on a periodic basis and, and share them. Um, and then, um, and so that pretty much, it. and then we continue to talk about um, here in the, in the targets is to identify and partner with other organizations as well. So that's in the, in the governance, um, in terms of the things that we've done up to date on this, um, we've said we've, we've developed and, and, and released the engagement plan. We, and again, we did several events um, where we partnered with universities or we partnered with other um, ICANN functions to deliver events. And then um, keep in mind, please, as you look at this, is that some of these events, they're not necessarily ours. So we're not putting them together as GSC staff, but we're invited to help with them. So we're either coordinating attendance, we're helping publicizing them, or we are um, coordinating uh, speakers from, let's say, from the office of the CTO or from government engagement to come in and lecture or to provide information. So we're not always the organizer, so we don't always have control over how the event goes, but we're involved in organizing for sure. So third objective in the ICANN strategic plan is the unique identifier system. So the evolving of the unique identifier systems, um, a very easy one to point out to here is the um, introduction of new um, generic top level domains, um, the um, continued adoption of IPv6, um, uh, uh, the universal acceptance is also something that's pointed out here in uni unique identifier systems. And we'll talk at the end about what Naralo and us are doing in terms of universal acceptance. So universal acceptance here looks at the ability of you know, email systems, web system, co content development systems um, to be able to use these generic, uh, the top level domains, regardless of what scripts, script they're expressed in. So whether they're in Arabic, which goes right to left or Cyrillic or Chinese or ASCII based, you know, English, uh, German, uh, Spanish, et cetera that those um, labels are used um, and accepted by these div by dif different systems um, as any other top level domain. What we've seen over the years is some developers may have hard coded a static list of top, top level domains, um, you know, thinking that the list isn't dynamic, whereas we know that the list changes. Some top new top level domains are added, uh, some are retired, et cetera. Uh, the length of the top level domain is also has an impact on how acceptable it is. So some legacy systems might look at only top level domains are comprised of three letter domains like .com or info. Whereas we know with the introduction of new top level domains, the, the length has gone significantly higher. So um, all these assumptions that perhaps existed in legacy systems need to be addressed so that's what universal acceptance is focusing on. And that We want to work with organizations like the regional internet registries, for example, um, on promoting IPv6. Uh, Joe and uh, Joe here from my team and Erin have done several stories where they've talked about internet, where we, they work as Erin and I can on promoting IPv6, for example. Um, supporting community participation in PDPs, that's important, especially as the CPNSO and the GNSO both work on the next. Um, the rules for the next round of TLDs and the rules for the 
um, internationalized top level domains as well, really important things to participate in. Um, again, partnering with Opto is a very um, uh, essential thing for us to do here, and we work with them on a regular basis on these, um, on this type of, um, on this uh, goal specifically. Um, and in terms of outcomes here, what we look at is uh, level of participation in uh, level of participation in the different UA universal acceptance courses that we discuss and offer. Uh, level of participation in the PDPs in developing the rules for the next round of TTLDs. Uh, and then in, in general, just the ability to promote awareness and um, about new ideas and, and new technologies that, that really need um, adoption and need understanding in order for it to be adopted. Uh, events here again against this one, these are the events that we captured. Um, again, as you see, um, events that are partnership between ICANN staff and um, uh, different ICANN staff departments with, with other organizations, um, as well as uh, webinars to discuss specifically the um, unique identifier system. Uh, and then finally, the strategic objective. This is the fourth one in the, in the strategic plan, which is the geopolitical issues. So this uh, strategic goal from the ICANN strategic plan looks at addressing geopolitical issues in impacting ICANN's mission to ensure a single and global interoperable internet. So there's many different facets to this goal, uh, several things that are going on uh, that, we need, that we all need to pay attention to. Um, one such topic is the um, evolving evolving legislative and regulatory development when it comes to internet and um, data privacy, and, uh, et cetera. So that's something to, to keep an, an eye on here. And then to continue to build alliances in the internet ecosystem to raise awareness um, about global stakeholders and ICANN's mission and policy making in order to keep this uh, multi-stakeholder uh, process um, that the in, in order to keep this uh, as governed by the multi-stakeholder process in terms of engagement areas for us and target outcomes again it's um and you saw a lot of this talked about in the ICANN 72 which is sharing information raising awareness um about the ICANN about ICANN's role sharing information about different legislation that is being discussed and the possible impact of it on the internet and how, how things work on the internet. Um, sharing um, um, uh, within ICANN, we have what we call the legislative tracker. So when different members of, of our team know about these different legislations that have come, we all track it in this legislative tracker and we keep, and, and, it, and it's our trigger to a have it reviewed properly by somebody who understands it in order for us to have enough in understanding of, of the potential in, um, um, impact that it has so that we can share proper information about it. Um, so that's kind of also in our um, in our target as well with this one is to collaborate with the government engagement team on these um, issues and to provide them the proper briefing when when appropriate. In our case, of course, here being in North America, we need to keep an eye for them what's happening in the um, United States government and the Canadian government on this, and that's who we engage with on this on this goal. Um, and then we also uh, do uh, compile communications uh, and materials um, following each meeting and we share it with these government contacts. So after, again, 72 for, 72, for example, there'll be a communication that gets sent out from ICANN uh, GSE staff here in North America to government contacts in North America, the Canadian government and US government contacts to basically discuss what happened in the meeting and keep them informed. And that's what's captured here in terms of the types of events that we do here for against this goal. Um, and I think uh, so. That's it. So if you notice, I know I I talked to you about four of the uh, four 
goals that are lifted directly out of the ICANN strategic plan, um, and then how they're implemented or how they're um, how engagement um, um, activities are planned against them in the IAN, in the North America engagement plan. There is a fifth goal in the ICANN strategic plan, and that's the financial. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I can't remember what how they specifically worded, but that one is in, is basically concerned with uh, how finances are managed and how um, they're they're done in uh, a responsible way and with it keeping keeping within the model. And that this is something that we felt is something that we can directly um, contribute to, to here in the engagement plan. That's why it's not mentioned. But those are the five. Um, goals that are specific that are from the ICANN engagement and strategic plan. So, in terms of reporting on progress, what we want to make sure that we do is that we um, periodically um, gather that data of how we're doing against the plan, and that we publish it, whether it's on the website or however we decide to, that we publish to the community how we're doing against the plan. And that we each year we need to keep revisiting the plan, even though it covers 2021 20, to 2025, we need to visit it and update it and refresh it with any new information that um, that become um, uh, any any new additional goals or updated goals that are um, um, added to the ICANN strategic plan, which this follows closely to. Um, so before I go into the Q&A, Eduardo, you asked me to speak about uh, what we're doing in terms of um, one of the projects that we were, were working with Narelle on. So we've been working for, I feel like, almost two months now uh, with Eduardo and Glenn uh, on a project to bring uh, universal acceptance, acceptance training to the North America region. So between Aston and GSE staff here, Joe and myself, and then the Naralo, um, and, and Naralo and then the Universal Acceptance Steering Group. We're working on a training uh, course to offer to the North American region about these universal acceptance issues specifically. So we want to make it, we kind of are starting with a very um, kind of an overall general idea of just to talk about what are these universal acceptance issues. Why, why are they, why is there even an, an issue with accepting new TLDs that are delegated in the root zone? And then dig in a little deeper and work with, with even um, uh, um, on a more technical level with email developer, with email uh, implementers and um, Java developers, et cetera, on how to, how to address issues in their system to make the universal acceptance, uh, to, to overcome universal acceptance issues. So what I talked about earlier in terms of assumptions on, you know, is that the root zone, that the list of TLDs in the root zone might be a static list, uh, assumptions on the length of the TLDs, assumptions on how an, e how an email system should handle an email address that has a right to left email address if it's in Arabic or Hebrew versus um, a left to right email address, you know, that's let's say in Spanish, but also has um, uh, some of the, like an NEA in it or something that has uh, a diacritic. So those are the things that we'll be going into in terms of that training. So it's a four lecture course over four weeks. I think we settled on Thursday, but I'm not sure, I'm sorry. Uh, we can share the dates. I'll put the dates here as soon as I'm able to get to the chat when I'm not sharing. I'll share the dates for the course and where to find information. But that's essentially what we're partnering with Narelle on. It's, it's, a, so it's, it's a fairly large effort. We're starting it in January. We've been planning for it for about two weeks. I'm sorry, two months already. There'll be announcements going um, out soon to say, to invite people to register. But it's some, one of the bigger um, efforts that we've done with Narelle so far, and I think it's going really well. I think uh, with, we, we know that it has done by other regions already. Lacralo has done it, and I believe um, the Asia Pacific region have done, have done it. And they've had really good success with it. So we're hoping for the same. Um, um, thank you, Naila. So with that, Eduardo, you're on mute. Oh, I'm sorry. Now I was going to say questions and answers, you know. This is uh, the chance for the membership to ask 
any questions to Naela, even though if they are not part of the plan, you know, Naela with us here. So, you know, uh, while somebody has a question, comes up with a question, I have uh, one, I want to say something about the universal acceptance. I want to add to what you said that even though we send this information of inviting people from the, uh, the region, uh, you know, we send this information through our the North American, uh, through the narrow lists, uh, you know, if you know somebody in your ALS, if you know somebody in, the, in your community that works in, in, in systems, uh, that works in companies that, 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 you know, has to do with servers and that, that, that works with the, with emails and their technical oriented, please invite them to participate in this. This is this is not only open to the ICANN membership, this is open to anyone interested in, in universal acceptance and understanding what it needs to be done on a technical level, you know, on the technical part of the training, or what to do in your mailing system so you can start accepting uh, uh, these uh, new domain names. Um, I just wanted to add that. And uh, also, um, I just want to reiterate, I know you said it, Naela, uh, people get confused with these uh, plans uh, because you have an FY21, FY22, FY23, blah, blah, blah. This is a plan from FY21 to FY25, 25th. So it's a, it's a five-year strategic plan. And you mentioned it at the end that the that we, we did now, the FY22, is, is is a revision to the FY21 to the FY25, uh, 25th right. plan. So, and people get confused because they, they think there is a plan every year and, and it's it's the same plan revised. Uh, you know, just I just wanted to make sure people understand that. There are a couple, there, there is Alfredo. So do you want to manage the, uh, the Q and A, Anaela, please? It's easy for you. Sure, yeah, happy to. Go ahead, Alfredo, I see you. I think you are first. Uh, yes, uh, this is Alfredo for the, for the record. Uh, my question, Naila, is regarding the UA training. I mm -hmm. see that there, there are four sessions, and it, there's sort of a footnote that says that there will be a certificate for those that take the technical session. Can you explain what that means? Yeah. Yeah, so um, the UASG, which is the Universal Acceptance Steering Group, um, is the one that will be issuing those um, certificates. And the reason why, um, so they've, they're, they're doing that because they've done it in, in previous trainings as well. Uh, the reason why we're doing it is it really goes very deep at the, uh, in, the, in the second half of the training. Um, we actually are bringing, so I don't know if you're familiar with some of the people that will do the training, but um, Champika is one who's our team member from the Asia Pacific region. Um, uh, I, I can't recall who the other uh, gentleman is who will be doing the other uh, uh, technical training, but they go very deep into talking about how to do um, your, how to make changes to your systems, how to talk, you know, they go into Java. So if people aren't familiar with Java in Java, they will get lost in that training. So we give them that uh, certificate as kind of a recognition that they've gone through the training. Basically, that's why um, that, that, that's what that certificate is about. If I may ask a follow up question, uh, Naila, does that imply that there's going to be some kind of practical lab in that particular part of the training? Um, that's a really great question. Um, one of the things that we've, our planning team um, that has asked already uh, for when we were planning is um, um, we talked to, to the, we talked to the Okta team about uh, setting up some of these virtual labs. Um, I know the Okta team has set up virtual labs for other things and they've been very popular. So as far as I know, there isn't a lab for um, for tinkering with this, that, or, or at least something that lives beyond the training. But that is something that we've already asked for, and I think would be very helpful going forward for those people that get the training. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's a really great question. Yeah. Um, Marita, I think you were next. Hi, it's Marita speaking. Yes, I think I was next. 
Uh, this is a little out there, Nayala. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm dragging um, something out of my memory from before the pandemic, which feels like 100 years ago now. <laughs> and, and I was at a conference uh, and I met someone who was an ICANN staff person posted in Montreal. I, and I wonder whether or not that still exists and whether there's anything that, uh, thank you for your great description of your, uh, of your plan, but does this person fit into your plan at all? If that person still exists? Was it, so someone in Montreal, was it Adiel by any chance? Was it Adiel? Um, gosh, I mean, now I feel like I have to put a picture of him so you can tell me yes or no. Um, oh, I can't remember the name. Yeah, uh, this is Adriel. Uh, Adiel is the only one in uh, Montreal, and I can't stop. By... That would be it then. Yeah. So Adiel, Marita, to connect, if, if it is Adiel, I have to assume it is probably Adiel. So Adiel is, thank you for the picture, okay. Heidi. Uh, Adiel is uh, David Huberman's boss. So David Huberman is assigned to us to do technical engagement uh, with, with, the mouth, uh, with, with the office of the CTO. And Adiel is the head of the technical engagement team. So yes, Adiel very much fits in the picture. In fact, it was Adiel who attended the space session and talked to me about certain things that were discussed during the space session uh, during ICANN 72. So we are very much involved with Adiel and his team. Um, and the building of the technical engagement team is something that Adiel has been working on for several years now. So to give you an idea, there's David Huberman on his team. He looks after North America, and I believe he also looks after uh, parts of the European region. Then uh, uh, there's, uh, there's a couple, there's one more person in the Africa region. Um, guys, help me out, my colleagues. I can't pick up names, but that's, that's what they have. They have a, a system basically where they uh, loan out uh, team members to different regions. And, and, and David happens to be our team member. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank, thanks for that, Nayala. I just, I just, I'm always a little confused about it, and I didn't realize that there was a MyCan staff person actually in Canada. Sometimes we feel like we're kind of off the end of somewhere, and and uh, and, and yeah. So thank you. <laughs> no, I'm glad, um, Marita. Whatever we can do more in Canada, uh, believe me. Uh, first of all, um, it's uh, I think if I think it's some it's a place that m many of our staff members love to go. We all enjoyed the last meeting that we had before the pandemic. Oh, and you're right; it, it seems like forever ago. Um, but if there's ever ideas or things that you want us to look at, please by all means. Um, David. Hi, David Mackey. For the record, um, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, wonderful. It's always. Um, Nice that, uh, and I, I'd like to again thank Eduardo for bringing in different people from around ICANN uh, to help us uh, in the Norello monthly meeting. The, the question I have, and I'll, I'll warn you, it probably, there probably is no answer, but I'm curious about your, your thoughts on it. The, the question I have is, as Norello, um, we, uh, this, this particular group that, that uh, you're speaking in front of, are responsible for end users in North America. Now, end users, for the most part, don't have much awareness, if any awareness, of how the internet works, let alone the specialized knowledge that you need uh, to participate properly within ICANN. I'm just curious, have you thought, with respect to the end user, and it, it's North America in this particular case, but it can apply to end users around the world in terms of that stakeholder group, how do you engage or do you engage? What, what kind of limitations do you think, uh, knowing that there really is an impossible way to answer my question? <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks for trying. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks for the impossible question. <laughs> um, so, you know, David, what I'm going to say here on this one, you're, you're right, it's a, it's a tough one. Um, I think where we, we have a hard time in ICANN uh, in terms of you know, uh, what to engage and at what level, keeping in mind the role of ICANN as a very technical organization and 
and a and a fairly narrow remit at that. So um, you know, if if you look at the ICANN bylaws, we're very we're we're responsible for a very specific function uh, when it comes to the DNS and the coordination role. So trying to engage too much, uh, in, in trying in trying to engage, we have to keep in in mind, you know, that we need to stay uh, focused on the, on the, on the remit. So that's one thing. Um, but in terms of end users, what I what I have to tell you in the last year and a half, I was I have been surprised with um, the level of engagement that has been happening at. Um, like at educational institutions, universities, I think there has been a lot more interest in that. And I think part of it is the realization that if we don't start early, we lose, we lose people. Um, I mean, it's too late to try to engage with them later on. Um, so I don't know if that helps, but there's been um, more engagement at the beginning in, in um, you know, like at universities and academic settings. Um, there have been more calls for us to produce um, to focus on these I can learn courses and and talk about, for example, I think one of the 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 inputs that we got when we were doing the development the, the engagement the development of the engagement plan, and it was specifically from here from this audience in Naralo. And they said, don't just talk about spreading out root server um, instances. Talk about why would I want a root server? What does it do for me? Um, what is a root server to start with? So produce more materials on that. So I can see that is certainly within the I can remit, and that is something that we could do more on. But I think I, I David, I will go back to it's a struggle between being sticking to the remit and then and then um, but still not alienating your as you said um, um, end users. No, thank you. That that actually makes um, uh, you actually help me in the sense that if you tier the engagement one to be some sort of um, self-service education for for basic information and then i like what you said about targeting universities and and if you have if you tier the engagement at those two levels i actually that probably is the right way to go so thank you for answering my unanswerable questions appreciate it <laughs> thank you david appreciate it uh glenn i'm like heidi i i had to collect the unmute uh, thank you. Um, two things. One is, is, since you brought up the training and you love Montreal, uh, perhaps we can do the same kind of universal acceptance in French. Uh, perhaps we can work with the ISOC uh, Quebec folks and other folks uh, and, and look at reaching more of our francophone speakers in Canada. So uh, they, did, they were uh, responsible for a French track of our North American school back in uh, 2018. So perhaps we can work with you on, on that. But I do want to shout out, Herb has joined us, and I'm not sure he joined us late or or because of the time zone difference, but how does Herb's work work with you in terms, and, and uh, I guess you could you can ask Herb to speak as well. So there, there must be a role that Herb has with regards to what you're doing as well. Oh, that's a really great question. Um, Herb, I, if you're on the call and you'd like to talk, I am happy for you to comment on that. I've worked with Herb in um, previous uh, roles in ICANN on very specific things that came to his attention that needed input. Um, but I, Herb, you and I haven't really interacted with much in this role. So, if, but I know that if, you know there are times when I would need to call on Herb. So, if you wanted to go ahead and comment on that, Herb, what a great question, Glenn. I never thought about that. No, so, go no ahead, problem. Herb. If you're able to speak, please go ahead. Uh, hi, folks. Yes, I am late. Uh, I just came in when I realized that the the meeting starts <clears throat> started at three o'clock my time and not four o'clock my time. So. Uh, Neil, I'm sorry, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I, I just got <laughs> so, so maybe, Glenn, maybe if you have a question, I would be more than happy to answer it. I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm really a of um, so what are we talking about? <laughs> ah, Herb, you got me. Okay, so so basically, I think a lot of people don't realize the role of the ombudsman. So so your function, your role uh, is an important role, and I think explain to people 
if a, a lot of organizations don't realize the unique and, and valuable service you provide to the community. So, you know, in order to, to facilitate what uh, the team is trying to do, there's going to be probably sometimes where there's going to be people have differences of opinion. So I guess what I'm saying, this session was about engagement and, and the North American strategy. So I guess um, what I'm calling out to you, Herb, and I, and I know we're limited in time, you know, what, what function, what role do you serve in terms of the community? Okay, well, um, well, <clears throat> as far as the community goes, who I serve, uh, trickles right down to the to the end user. Um, so anybody that is involved uh, with ICANN in, in any way at all, except um, to a very limited extent, uh, anybody that's in a contractual relationship with them. So, um, you know, I, it may not be jurisdictional if somebody has a problem with, uh, with ICANN, but uh, I can definitely find them a problem. So primarily it's, it's anybody that's treated unfairly by ICANN, uh, ICANN board or uh, um, any of the leadership teams in the community and stuff like that. So um, if uh, how it pertains to uh, what uh, we were just talking about, I'm not quite sure because I'm not sure yet what we were talking about, but if, if it's about uh, stakeholder engagement, uh, I think probably my biggest role is making any new people that show up in the community feel safe, so that they can have the uh, they can have the uh, the comfort of coming into the community, coming in to work with ICANN, the stakeholder groups, uh, constituencies, uh, you know, interactions with the board, uh, knowing that it's a safe, secure environment that they're not going to be harassed, they're not going to be treated unfairly, they're not going to be discriminated against. Um, so the, when, when it comes to any of those issues, uh, making, you know, inclusion, diversity, um, um, equity, uh, belonging, uh, those are my, those are the things that I try to promote and that I will fight for people if any of those issues are, uh, are trampled on by anybody in the community. Uh, from the uh, from colleagues right up to the top uh, board level, or the to, right up to the CEO as far as work goes. So uh, you know when it comes to engagement and and uh, getting the community involved, uh, I'm there for them, and I'm there to help them uh, uh, feel comfortable and to protect them if if they are in any way at all uh, treated unfairly by by anybody uh, in the in the ecosystem in the multi stakeholder. Uh, community. Uh, does that kind of answer your question? I, mean, I apologize, my hair looks terrible, but uh, I have hat head today. It's it's starting to get cold in Canada. I am I am I'm. This is Eduardo. I I am I am uh, aware that we are run out of time. Yes. Uh, I think uh, uh, Glenn, do you do you want to wrap it up or shall we? A closed meeting. Thank you for giving me a couple of minutes of your sure. time. Uh, no, you're the information that you're providing is exceptionally very good. You know. Yeah, you know what, I'd like to, I, I know next next meeting you'll be there on time, right? Uh, I'll check the calendar and see what day it is and what time it is, but uh, I know the GNSO council meeting is at one o'clock in the morning my time this month, uh, so, uh, but I can try. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, you know, it's been a great session. Thank you so much, uh, Naya and, and, and Joe, for your, your contributions today, and, and we look forward to working closely with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, and uh, you, you know, so much repeat for that. Inviting. Thank you. So Thank you. we ran out of time. Thank you for being here today, and see you in one month. Bye bye. This meeting. Bye everybody. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye, bye. all. Bye. bye. bye.